is very soon to finish with then only well you can see the skies uh, up above with only six or seven miles to go could afford to back right off and really tiptoe around you saw you saw the car step slightly out of line there active sus uh, suspension notwithstanding and that's another of the things that Alain Prost has had to learn to master because he didn't have active suspension in Ferrari when he drove for them in 1991 in which Gerhard Berger going through the picture does there and uh, Prost is now on his 71st lap and it is, John, we've just had a message from Jonathan Palmer in the pits that it is beginning to rain and in the immortal words of Jackie Stewart, uh, I can see a few wee spots of rain myself on the, on the track. And that's the helicopter picture, and you can see that it is looking uh, very, very unpleasant indeed in weather terms around Kyle Army between us and the city of gold, Johannesburg. And you can see now the spray coming up from the tyres as Alain Prost dives inside Gerhard Berger. But very soon, the Frenchman will be starting his last lap to win, I think, I hope. The, well, you can see the rain on the screen now. It is starting to come down very hard indeed. Prost slows down. Gerhard Berger closes right up on him. And behind Gerhard Berger is Derek Warwick. Well, now this is starting to get very exciting for... The, the, the race, Derek Warwick pass, tries to pass Berger but don't get too excited about it because he's two laps behind the Austrian in the Ferrari but you're looking at the first man now the fifth man now and the sixth man now that's Alain Prost, Derek Warwick and Gerhard Berger in respectively Williams, Footwork and Ferrari and Alain Prost is going to crest the rise he goes over the line and he is now on his 72nd and last potentially victorious lap. Yes, well, he can certainly afford to tiptoe right round. I think that's uh, the drive arm circuit, and the rain is really tipping down there, but we're on the last lap. Prost, uh, the secret when uh, riding on slick tyres in these conditions is to change right down in the gearbox. It's the only way a driver can really know that he's going slowly enough. But Prost, with all his experience, uh, you know, the wisdom is, and there's a lightning flicking across the screen, and uh, the, the clever way to do it is to put the car right down into first gear. And that looks uh, pretty unpleasant, but luckily they haven't got long. Well, just look at it. Uh, who would have thought that this was going to happen yesterday and the day before when we had the most marvellous weather and nothing like this? But it's only a few yards now for Prost. Let's hope he doesn't do anything daft, but he's most unlikely to with all his experience. He will stay behind JJ Leto and Derek Warwick. Derek Warwick is going to finish in the pits. Uh, sorry, in the, in the points. Hopefully not in the pits, but there's Berger. Berger is out. Gerhard Berger goes off. And Leto, I think, is challenging Warwick for his, uh, well, now fifth place. Oh, my goodness. Uh, Prost uh, looks like winning second. Senna looks like finishing second. They're both a lap ahead of Mark Blundell, who is in third place. And Warwick is still staying ahead of Leto as Prost tiptoes out of the last corner of the South African Grand Prix and wins it. And I think Leto just pipped in a real photo finish, pipped Warwick on the line for fifth place. But um, it was difficult to see from the angle we were looking at. Yeah, I'm just trying to work out in my mind how it will go in terms of laps because uh, Alain Prost had not actually finished the race when Leto and Warwick went across the line. But anyway, here is, uh, here is Ayrton Senna and there is a very happy... Williams Garage with Frank Williams himself knowing that one of his cars has won the South African Grand Prix uh, a real nail biter for the first 30 or so laps until Alain Pross got past Ayrton Senna is coasting home now he still hasn't finished actually Mark Blundell has because he's a lap adrift and he's in third position yes and in fact um Warwick, you're quite right, Murray. But it, whoops, and there goes Derek Warwick, because of course he is still racing. He was, uh, or was, still racing. And of course, the fact that he crossed the line just now will 
register him and just lose one more lap. But that certainly hands the place to JJ Leto. Ayrton Senna crossing the line probably slower than he's ever crossed it before, but he should worry because in the process he finishes in second place. The South African Grand Prix undeniably won by Alain Prost in his Williams Renault on his Grand Prix return as the desperately unfortunate Derek Warwick climbs out of his footwork Mugen. In second position is Ayrton Senna and in third place as a very despondent Broken-hearted, I suspect, Derek Warwick walks away from the scene of his crash. Mark Blundell finishes third for Ligier. Ayrton Senna collects, as he so very often does, a Brazilian flag. Christian Fittipaldi has finished in fourth position. A Sauber has finished in the points at his very first Grand Prix in the hands of JJ Leto. Here is a replay of Derek Warwick losing his car and... Uh, a sure fifth position, well, not a sure position, a very likely fifth position, and if it had been fifth, it certainly would have been sixth, as he goes across the wet track on his slick, no-grip tyres, sails across the gravel, over the grass, into the tyre wall. JJ Leto finishes in sixth position in the, uh, in the Sauber, and De Berger out, and uh, Derek Warwick out. So really only five finishers out of 26 starters as Alain Prost tours in. I would have thought that uh, Derek Warwick had done enough to uh, get sixth place uh, but that caption has Berger into sixth place and of course he may well have completed one more lap than Derek Warwick did. Yes, and he was ahead when they were, they were both three laps down, but of course Berger crossed the line ahead, so poor old Derek Warwick just missed out on the points there. What a shame. So how does one summarise the 1993 South African Grand Prix? Well, uh, thumbs up to Williams, hats off to Alain Prost for his 45th Grand Prix victory. He had already won more Grand Prix than anybody else. Now he is extending the gap between himself and the second best. The Williams has proved that it's still the best car in Grand Prix racing, but as Mark Blundell, who's clearly run out of petrol, having finished in third position, and he has finished third, coasts in. So Senna, and that's Ricardo Patrese limping in after his problem. Well, it's certainly been a race of incident. Only five finishers out of 21 starters. Williams have proved themselves again, as I was saying, the best car. But this is the danger car, and that's the danger driver. The McLaren Ford and the intrepid Ayrton Senna. And if that combination goes on in Grand Prix racing in 1993, and the... McLaren team and their tag technicians and the Cosworth Ford people develop that car and as Ayrton Senna said yesterday I hope that whoever allocates the Ford engines will take note of the fact that the McLaren's gone very well indeed and take note of the fact that our engine is two series behind the Benetton well as the McLaren is developed and it potentially gets a, a better Ford engine I can see that team being right up with Williams Yes, uh, certainly, Murray, it would seem uh, sensible that, uh, that Ford should provide the best engine for, for a team that's got a serious chance for the World, Champion, for the world Championship. Uh, certainly, um, uh, Benetton have the best engine at the moment. There's no reason, hopefully, why the capacity can't be increased to give it to McLaren, because uh, Senna somehow looks uh, to be more of a shot at the title, uh, on the evidence here, anyway, in qualifying, than... Uh, the Benetton team but they went well in the race victory for Prost second for Senna, third for Blundell fine drive from the Englishman and from Christian Fittipaldi fourth and JJ Leto fifth, Gerhard Berger sixth, ends a very exciting impactful South African Grand Prix we go next to Brazil in two weeks time